Android Dialogues, where we have bite-sized conversations with people in the Android community. I'm Wynn Dow, and I'm speaking with... Uh, Nathaniel Wagoner. Hey, Nathaniel. So you guys might notice something a little bit different, uh, that Nathaniel and I are not in the same room. Uh, we're actually on a video call. But uh, Nathaniel, how did, uh, where are you based, and how did you get started in Android? Uh, so I'm in Seattle, a recent transplant. I was actually in Washington, D.C. till recently. Uh, I got started in Android in my internship in college. I um, ended up working on a DARPA project called uh, TransApps, which was bringing Android mobile phones to soldiers in Iraq and Afghanistan. Um, a super brief synopsis of that is basically the military's like 30 years behind us when it comes to infantry tech. So their, their airplanes and stuff are super advanced. The things they hand the guys with guns are like from the 80s. So this was a goal to bring... Um, like uh, modern day consumer grade mapping technology primarily to uh, to soldiers so that they could have, they weren't using paper maps in the field. And then from there it grew out into a full mobile operating system and um, you know, all based off of Android and stuff. So I started there. Uh, I ended up going from an internship to, uh, I, I led a couple of different efforts there. Um, the titles sound really cool, but it was basically just bundles of apps so one was the global response force um one was the uh explosive ordnance disposal efforts um they were just android app collections of different things that those groups were interested in that i made sure you know got delivered and stuff um and then from there i went to a company called zap media i did mobile audio uh advertising basically um and then just recently i joined cyanogen Inc., which needs to be stressed, is very different from Cyanogen Mod. They're two different things, um, and I just started there about two months ago. So a few months ago, I did an audio hackathon, and I thought to myself, "Well, I need to learn about the audio APIs because I figured there's going to be like me playing with audio." And I started looking at uh, looking into the audio APIs, and uh, I never actually used the audio APIs during the hackathon, but. Uh, lucky me, while I was researching it, I saw that during the GDG Dev Fest in DC, there was this really yeah. cool guy doing an audio API talk, and I was like, I gotta talk to this guy. So I hit up Nathaniel and asked him, and, and I actually learned that he is a badass when it comes to the audio APIs. So Nathaniel, can you kind of tell us uh, maybe a little bit about why you might end up using the Android API and what you can actually do with it? Yeah, um, I mean, the why would you use it, I think is, one of those questions that when it comes to audio is like, it's both very obvious and very, um, uh, it's like so obvious people don't realize it kind mm -hmm. of, yeah. which is that, you know, y you kind of have a, you have a few core senses, right? You can see things, you can touch things, you can taste things, but, but hearing things is like, for most of us, if we're not hearing impaired, fundamental to our daily lives. Um, we, we hear people coming up from behind us we listen to conversations we listen to music all the time and all of those are things i mean with the exception i guess of people creeping up behind you maybe your phone's not going to have a an audio element for that but you know we listen to music all day we uh we place phone calls on the phone the core behavior of a phone is you know theoretically at least to place phone calls you know that's all audio uh so the why of it is i think um you know, to try and tap into one of the core sensory mechanisms you have to interact with the user. You know, Spotify streams music, video game apps have audio, uh, videos, um, you know, buttons have clicking noises for mm -hmm. a, a feedback element. Um, so all of that are reasons why you might need it. Um, I think there was sort of a second part to the question, uh, what can it do, I yeah, guess, was yeah. it? yeah. So, so that's uh, – the audio APIs on Android are really interesting because there's a lot of layers to them. There's sort of – there's the Java layers, um, and then there's the native layers. And the native layers are much more powerful and give you a lot more fine-tuned control over how your application works. But that comes with a huge uptick in complexity um, and maintenance uh, difficulties. Um, so at the, at the Java level, you've got a couple of core classes, media player, audio record, um, being the two sort of most obvious of them, but also audio tracks. There's a bunch. They all have different purposes based around the duration of the sound that you're trying to play, the uh, way the sound is being used. So if it's a 
a repeated sound that's played very quickly and needs low latency. There's a, you know, you would use an audio track or a, um, something like that as opposed to the media player, which is very slow. Uh, and there's a lot of different moving parts there. Um, I will point out, you said I was a badass with audio, but I, I worship at the altar of Glenn Caston on the uh, Google Android audio team. So um, if you if anyone's out there and interested in audio, Google him and just watch his videos. Everything I know about Android audio, I learned from that. So, um, And also reading a lot of source code, I guess. <laughs> I've read this a couple of times when I was researching audio. I kind of read a lot of unfortunate comparisons between iOS and Android can never help it. Uh, always, mm -hmm. always, always there. And I feel like there was a lot of, I guess, a lot of what I read concerned people who wanted to say, like make their own synth apps or make their own sound recorder yeah. apps. And I heard about this thing called audio latency on Android and it sounded like yeah. a big deal. And could you yeah. kind of explain yeah. to us what it is? Yeah, so, uh, I mean, latency is a term you'll hear in a lot of different places, not just in audio. It's basically the period of time between when a signal is introduced to a system and when it exits, right? So there's some period of time between when I make a noise and when the phone actually um, reproduces it at the other end of its signal chain. And so that period is what the latency is. The unfortunate part of it on Android is that the latency is typically pretty long. Um, so for something like a synth app that you had described, but also for, I mean, a variety of other applications, um, low latency is important. And the human ear, uh, typically anything over 10 milliseconds, a trained musician will notice. Um, a, your average listener is a little more um, uh able to deal with that you know they won't notice them as easily but if you get much past 15 to 20 milliseconds you're really getting into problem territory uh typical numbers on flagship android devices are in the 300 millisecond range um yeah it's it's bad you know a third of a second so you can imagine for like a synth app where uh you're um a, you know trying to play a tone when you play it and you're trying to do it in rhythm uh, if there's a variable, so not just 300 milliseconds, but it's sometimes it's 200 milliseconds, sometimes it's 400 milliseconds, it, it, it becomes very, very difficult to, um, be consistent, right? And, and there's, there's no music, you know, music in particular is all about consistency. Without consistency in time, music becomes very, uh, wild and sort of, um, non-musical, at least to the Western ear, uh. You know, so those those things are the core of that problem. The reason you hear the unfavorable comparison to iOS is that um, iOS typically performs at about the 10 millisecond range. They usually do a little bit under 8.5, something like that. Um, there's a lot of reasons for that. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's like how how ingrained is it in the Android platform and, and what can be done or what is being done about it? Sure. Um so there's a lot of different ways to approach the latency problem on Android. I think the the best first step when you you first want to get your head around why latency is an issue mm -hmm. is to look at fragmentation. Um, you know the the hardware abstraction layer is yeah. sort of the the Hal. wild west. Good old Hal. Yeah, good old Hal. Yeah. <laughs> you know is um, and and vendor bugs in the Hal are a major source of issues um, for audio mm -hmm. uh, in the entire ecosystem. Now, at the top tier of Android devices, sort of flagships, mm -hmm. there's a lot of really technical reasons for the problems that have happened, uh, the latency behaviors. The um, biggest ones have to do with the way the kernel schedules work um, and... Essentially, so audio needs to be processed in a very regular pattern. Mm -hmm. uh, the moment the processor time for audio computations um, becomes irregular, that is audible to the user as mm -hmm. something called popcorn. So mm. that's like a, a clicking noise that you might hear sometimes or like a little bit of static. That, that That's basically you... So you can visualize an audio signal as a waveform, right? Mm -hmm. And it's... E what they do is they take samples of that waveform mm -hmm. and each of those samples has a um, 
a number associated with it between uh, negative one and one, essentially. Sure, and yeah. the waveform just oscillates between those. So what happens is if the audio processing, the audio worker thread doesn't have time to do whatever work it's going to do, mm -hmm. the audio playing thread is still pulling for audio content. Mm -hmm. And so it will fill its audio buffers with whatever's handy. I think typically it's zeros, and so you get a lot of weird noises mm. um, just because it's it's random zeros in the middle of audio packets. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, it could be another value uh, depending sure. on what's going on, but I believe that's pretty typical. Mm -hmm. um, so that's something they've actually done a lot of work to address recently. The reason I mentioned Glenn Caston earlier is he, over the last at least two years, I haven't heard much of it out of him this year, but 2013 and 14, um, they did a lot of work on uh, changing the way audio threads get scheduled with the processor. So they, they operated a much higher scheduling priority and are thus guaranteed more regular processor time. Mm -hmm. um, but then they also did a lot of work providing different, uh, something they call the fast path, which I, I won't get into too much. It's a little out of scope for this. Um, but providing mechanisms for really committed developers to do that work. Oh, interesting. Um, yeah. The the other I think, um, in like useful way to approach the audio audio latency problem though mm -hmm. has to do with uh the way Android has traditionally used um, audio libraries. Hmm. So so I I might get argued with a bit on this, but I'd say sort of the standard in a lot of places is something called libflac. Mm -hmm. um, okay. And traditionally on Android, libflac hasn't been like a first class uh, library. It's been sure. utilized and increasingly slow as generations have come out. Um, but some of the work that we've done on the most recent Cyanogen uh, OS, uh, again, as opposed to Cyanogen Mod, um, that has seen a lot of big gains for us in audio performance is by more uh, aggressively working with libflac to leverage some of the power that it has there. Mm -hmm. So it's sort of a lot of different things. It's it's how sort of vendor specific issues. Right. It's um, I think uh, you know Android um, its audio pipeline in general mm -hmm. wasn't necessarily in the best shape early on mm -hmm. and then you've also got these different libraries that uh maybe haven't been leveraged to the full extent that they could be for the typical you know new to audio type person would you recommend they stay away would you recommend they get their gear on get ready for the big dive or is there kind of like an intermediate way that you know hey i, I really am interested in doing something musical or i'm really interested in doing a sound recorder or i just am really interested in doing something, you know, audio based in my app. What is your recommendation to that poor, poor person? It sounds like. <laughs> I mean, I, I think there's <laughs> that adventurous a lot. person. <laughs> yeah. I would say, first of all, you know, buckle up. You're, you're in for a ride. Um, audio performance is typically something that if you're comfortable working, uh, focusing on a device or maybe two, um, okay. typic typically you can get a solution that will work pretty well for you mm -hmm. um, without going crazy. Okay. It's when you want to scale that up to work on the vast majority of Android devices. Um, that is where you will start to really need to become an audio nerd. Mm -hmm. uh, nice. You know, that being said, I mean, at Zap, so... Um, uh, Zap Media was the audio ads company I worked for. And so what they did was it was audio advertisements that were served as a standard audio ad, but you would get a beep, um, a call to action. So after the beep, say, take me to Sears, right? Oh. And then a beep would happen and you could respond by voice. Mm -hmm. um, and you would say, take me to Sears. And then it would open a website or send you an email or whatever the actions were. Mm -hmm. And all of that was written in Java. It all works. We just went live. Um, our first ad got served in Slacker. I actually got an email from, uh, from those guys uh, today. Um, so, and all of that's Java stuff. So... Mm -hmm. You can do professional grade audio using the Java APIs. It's very possible. Mm -hmm. um, when you start to talk about being musical, that's where I think you need to start to look at C, and you really need to, you know, prepare to be, um, 
you know, to, to do a deep dive. Okay. Um, and, and, and like, it sounds like you're saying maybe there's some NDK stuff you can do that's better than yeah. the Java APIs and stuff like that. Okay. And yeah, like, yeah. like any third party libraries that I guess are more helpful than just going at it straight on your own or. So there's, there's a few, I'd say the two, um, biggest, biggest hitters, uh, that I'm aware of in terms of like specialized for Android. Mm -hmm. So there's um, Samsung published, I forget what they call it, but they published sort of a, an audio suite that you can leverage that has pretty decent performance. Um, but I believe that's tied specifically to Samsung devices. So mm -hmm. if it's not a Samsung, your leverage of that won't work. Um, and then there's something called Super Powered out there, which uh, has pretty solid performance gains when compared to um, a standard Android uh, system. Um, I think they've gotten their performance down to around 30 milliseconds, 35 milliseconds. Mm -hmm. uh, and they're basically, their floor is essentially limited by certain hardware factors that they just can't get past, um, again, without getting too too deep into it. <laughs> Uh, you know, without being pre-installed on the device and, and sure, really sure. writing some of these drivers, you you don't have that control. Right. Uh, but but they can they've gotten their performance down um pretty pretty substantially. Um, and then again, you know, if you really want to get hardcore, you can uh try and do stuff by like cross compiling your own audio libraries and stuff like that, which we ended up doing at Zap. We brought our own custom sort of libflack cross compile in so that we could leverage different things from there, um, like effects processing and stuff like oh, that. Wow. It's um, getting really serious. Yeah. And, and that's the thing you really got to, you need to pick your battles, you know, you need to decide just what it is you want to do, how many devices you want to do it on. And then from there start to really spec out your problem space. Um, this isn't really even talking about something like Bluetooth, which introduces a whole new world of problems. <laughs> nice. Um, and then, uh, you know, there's just a lot of different components to the system. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a hard one to give a clean answer to, I think. <laughs> Um, well, one thing I will say yeah. is that it is getting better. Um, audio performance has been improving throughout the life of, of Android. And uh, again, over the last two years, um, a lot of big steps have been made. I know uh, I mentioned this to you while we were warming up, but um, Cyanogen is putting out a 13.0 uh, M build, essentially. And for the one plus one, and we've actually managed to get the performance there down to about 10 milliseconds round nice. trip latency. Mm, so cool. it is possible. Yeah. Um, you can do it on Android. You just, you know, getting there takes a lot of work. And, you know, the, the great strength of Android is fragmentation. I mean, as much as we complain about it and it's a weakness, it's why Android's so powerful mm -hmm. is, you know... I mean, I always hear people complain about fragmentation, but every time I do it, I try and thank the fragmentation gods for a second, too, because, you know, it's how we got to, what is it, 80% of the market or 90% of the market, whatever it is, you know. Um, so in the same breath that you curse it, you kind of have to remember that it's the, the strength of the platform. I, I really like that, actually. I, I think you're the first person I've said I've, I've talked to who've said it like that, and I think that's a really good point to make and probably a positive note to to roll off on. Uh, if people wanted to find you on the internet and ask you for a job or in, a, in, in a, any other case, ask you for help with audio or other cool things, where can they find you on the internet? Uh, so I'm on Twitter at almost a host uh, for an old podcast that I did, which was <laughs> video game themed. Um, I still check that pretty regularly. I don't tweet a whole lot, but if you tweet me, I'll get back to you. So yeah, um, bug Nate on or bug Nathaniel on Twitter if you. Yes, please bug me. <laughs> so, but thank you so much for like oh, yeah. hopping on and and chit chatting with us. And my pleasure. Awesome, and thank you guys for joining us. And this is a little bit different format than you're used to. Uh, I know everything's are not perfect, but um, yeah, like, thanks guys for joining us, and we'll see you later. Bye. Awesome. Thanks for having me. Bye guys. Bye.